Hi guys! In this video, I will show you the whole process of visualizing the concept using D5. We'll start with creating a white render of a house for the process of looking for inspiration using D5's AI system, planning our final vision, and visualizing the concept in a very simple and effective way. Thanks, D5, for sponsoring this video. The first step will be working on the design, and when it's ready, we can prepare a white render. I override the material as a standard Corona physical material, but I will preserve the glass material so we can see the windows. Okay, so I have architecture design. The main solid is done. I'm not sure about the materials and atmosphere in the image though. If you feel stuck, I have great news for you. The new D5 HI is a perfect tool to help us in looking for inspiration. I keep the concept scenario options as default. We'll work on the prompt later. By the way, HI is D5's attempt for inspiration and fast iterations and more AI-powered features will roll out in D5 to speed up workflow even more, which is worth keeping an eye on. First of all, I upload the white render as a structure, so this render will be a base for all the generated images. Then I use one of our renders so it knows what style I need. I leave the settings as the default to give room for some extra changes. Next, let me describe my concept. I start with a wooden elevation. Here, the more specific you will be, the better results you will get. Perhaps soft light and a cloudy sky. In the advanced settings, we can choose how much creative license we give to D5HI. I choose something in between. I create the number of inputs to get more variations. Click Generate. Let's take a look. Ok, so the results are quite precise to what I had in the prompt. Yeah, that was a good idea. I definitely go with this sort of angle of light, from the front lightening the building and the lawn. I've tested various materials and modes the same way. I've got plenty of options, and here is the direction I've decided to take. I use this image as a reference for light brick. I like the dark accents and dark roofs. They add contrast to the building so it doesn't look too dull. Also, I like the trees in the background. I definitely add some to my image. Here, I like the trees in the foreground and the shrubs along the fence. Also, adding shrubs along the path will help. This light will be great. We can add some trees in the background to create some shadows in the front. I'd like to add some rain, so I use this wet asphalt as a reference. This color palette works perfectly with the whole concept. Soft light, a bit of summer rain, we have a nice contrast between warm indoor lights and a bit colder outside. Ok, as we have the idea ready, let's go to the software. Ok, so I decided to do bright brick with dark metal elements and dark wooden panels for the window. I applied these materials in 3ds Max. And now I am ready to start working in D5. I will use Sync 3ds Max for D5 workflow plugin. After installation, it will be automatically added to the 3ds Max toolbar. I will click the start icon and synchronization will begin. After it's finished, I can move around in 3ds Max and see the same changes in D5. Now, I will do a quick overview. The only thing I can see for now is the scale of the brick material. I change the material type to displacement and adjust the mapping. The same for the chimney. And that's it. All looks good to me. The next step will be importing the camera from 3ds Max, as I already set it up. Just one click here and the camera is in D5. Awesome. Lastly, I change the view type and I have the camera prepared. If I want to copy something in 3ds Max, I can easily sync it again to see the same changes in D5. Ok, now I can fully focus on my image in D5. Firstly, I work on the lighting. As I've shown you before, I want to go towards sunset lighting and warm colors. It's super easy as I just only have to change the position of the sun or type an hour and I see changes straight away. Something like this works well. I make some adjustments to the sun. I make it less intense and brighter size so it will give me the soft look I'm going to. I like to have some clouds, maybe a bit less though. We can do various adjustments here. I encourage you to play around with these options. They're pretty straightforward. And I make them slower as well. I'm happy with that. I adjust the effect panel. I'll adjust the exposure. Do you see the dark spots in the scene? We lose details there. I think there is too much contrast between highlights and shadows at the moment. Hmm, actually, maybe slightly colder. 
I definitely add the vignette effect to focus viewers' attention on the building, which is our main subject. I always desaturate images slightly, they feel more natural this way. Ok, in the end, I add some that. I think the one from my library will be perfect. Pacific Coast. Yeah, this is the vibe I'm going to achieve. It's a bit too much though, so I decrease the intensity. Perfect. Before we move to the next step, I've added some grass as it looks very empty now. Choose Scatter. I type grass to easily find what I need. I select this one, this one, and maybe this one. Three types will be good enough here. I reduce the size and radius. And paint places where I want to have grass. We don't have to be super precise here as from the low camera angle it won't be visible. As the grass is ready, I'll add rain. In D5 it's super easy. I love this option. With just one click we can create a totally different scenario. We can control the strings of the rain by moving the slider. The same for paddles, however here I'm happy with the default settings. Nice! I think we miss one final thing here, the fog. Again, super easy. Turn on the fog, that's it. We can adjust it though. I make it more visible. It will make the image more moody, which is the goal. We can make the fog a similar color to the sunlight. Something red-orange. Looks more cohesive. Some final adjustments and we're done. The next part will be adding some assets. Definitely, we have to make this garden look alive. I add some trees from the assets library. I go with HD trees. This one looks nice. I add jacarandas as well. When working on assets, especially those in nature, we have to think about the layering effect. We have to feel the depth of the image. Let's add a couple of them behind the fence. I like to keep my files clean, so I create a dedicated layer to this. All the time we have to think about composition as well. We're missing the foreground. So let's add some trees in the front to crop the shot as on our reference. Awesome! It's way better, but now the left hand side is too heavy, so I add one more tree on the other side. Looks nice. Ok, we definitely need some shrubs along the fence to break down this large piece of brick wall, similarly as on the reference we've generated. I use the path tool to do this quickly. I draw the line along the wall and then I adjust the settings. I want it to be bigger in general. And definitely it needs some randomization. Nothing in nature is regular, so I want it to look like in reality. Various sizes, directions and spacing between the plants. It's worth playing around a bit with these settings. The same on another side. If there is something wrong with the path or we want to change it, no problem, we can edit it. You can see that the process is very simple and we can get nice results very quickly. Let's add some shrubs along the path, similar to the reference. I'll take this with some flowers. And again, I use the path tool. Similar story here. We have to draw the path first and then adjust the distribution of the shrubs. Add some randomization and that's it. The same for another side. A very important part of this image will be 3D characters. They will complement the story. I want to create a family here, a couple and a child. We need people with umbrellas. I filter the models by typing umbrella. This girl will be perfect. She will be a great as a mother. I position her here. She will stand with the mother toward the dad. Perhaps he is inviting them inside? I make sure they face each other so it looks like a natural situation. In the end, some final touches. We have to work on the reflections. First of all, I add the building on another side so we don't see the sky only. It doesn't look realistic. I move it to the back. Also, because it's a multi-story building and it doesn't really suit the area too much, I move it down to imitate a lower building. It's not very visible, so it should be no problem. I add some trees in the front of the building so it will work well. Ok, let's add some trees to create nice reflections in the top windows. It's worth spending these couple extra minutes to take care of the reflections as they will take your renders to the whole new level, making it look realistic. In the end, I think it will be worth adding some shadows from the tree to the building. Ok, our sun is too soft. I make it smaller. Perfect. Now I adjust the position and that will be it. As a final touch, I add a light to the inside. I choose point light. I place it inside. And definitely it should be warmer. It will help the composition and the story too. 
Perfect. Actually, why not to add some birds to the right-hand side? I add a cluster of birds. All of this helps in conveying the story. Remember, not only architecture itself is important. In this case, the building is a house. So if you want to sell your idea, you have to show the viewers what emotions they will feel there or what they will do there. It's about the story you will tell them through the concept. And architecture will be a background to this story. On top of this, to make the workflow even more effective, D5 gives now the possibility for collaborating on the same project at the same time. So you can divide the tasks between different people and you can work on the same project at the same time. Let's say you work on the interior design. Others can see the changes you've done. Another person working on exteriors, you can see his changes too. Comments in the scene are also supported for prompt feedback and adjustments. You can create local libraries to store and share resources. The whole workflow is in one place. Isn't it great? I need to say that D5 is developing very quickly and the changes are very useful, especially for architects and designers. It's super easy software, very straightforward and with a very promising future. If you want to check it out by yourself, I put the link in the description. If you want to watch another tutorial in D5, watch the first video. And if you want to learn the whole system of creating amazing visualizations, watch the second one. Bye-bye!